You're listening to Your Worst Friend, going deeper. Here are your hosts, Shane and Matt. All right, with us today is Avery Jane. Avery's done many scenes with Devil's Films, Reality Kings, Tushy, and one of her newest scenes is with our friends, Shane, you'll remember them, Dan and Suzanne Dan. Ferrari yeah. of slutinspection.com. Okay, I will say I did my research on that scene prior to coming on to the interview today. Um, now, Avery, you can follow Avery like everywhere. I mean, she has so many links and they're gonna all be included in a social media post, but let's hit the most important ones. You can follow Avery on Twitter at AveryJaneXO. You can follow Avery on Instagram at AveryJaneX. On OnlyFans, go subscribe. Uh, I did last night. That was strictly research. I swear to you. Uh, yeah. Hope you're having fun in there. <laughs> That's uh, OnlyFans. It's at Avery Jane. Go to AveryJaneXXX.com uh, if you want to purchase some of her videos, individual videos. I love that. And if you'd like to go to her ultimate fan site, go to AllofAveryJane.com. And one last thing, uh, an appearance. Avery is going to be appearing at XBiz's fan show, X3, on January 7th and 8th at the Palladium in Hollywood, where she'll have her own booth. Uh, you can get your tickets at x3.show and use the code AveryX3 at checkout. And with all of that out of the way, uh, Avery Jane, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Not bad, not bad. I apologize <laughs> that my co-host and I look like capital rioters. Um, that's just because we need <laughs> haircuts. I'm just uh, hiding out, yeah, until <laughs> that whole thing blows over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's start out right with the basics. Um, how old were you when you got into the industry and what was kind of your path towards it? Uh, I, I've talked to a lot of girls who say, you know, a friend might have brought them in or they went for modeling and then it was, hey, you can get a bigger paycheck if you do this. Some girls, it's been their dream since they were 10 years old. Um, what was your path into the What's adult mine? industry? Yep. I mean, I thought about it for a while, probably since I was like 18, 19 years old, I've thought about it, but I never like seriously considered it um, until I was about 25. So about two years ago. Um, I did briefly wait, you're, wait, wait, you're 27? Yeah. Yo, you look 22 and I'm not just being complimentary. <laughs> like you just look great. Uh, I, That's yeah. good. It's weird because I'm only 19 years old, which is really a shame. It's like bad. It is because you look like you're like 48. <laughs> I'm not. Um, apologies. I didn't mean to step on you there. Go ahead. Continue. You were, what'd you say? You were 25. When I said 22, 25. 25 ish. Um, and yeah, I met a friend who was doing porn at the time. And so, you know. And I was like, hey, what's that about? What you doing there? And it just looked fun. Um, you know, I've worked in like strip clubs before and different stuff like that. So uh, the sex industry wasn't new to me. I've worked in like adult retail. I've worked in many different areas. So, you know, I was like, all right, check so many off the list. I guess porn's next. <laughs> sure. Sure. The problem is what's next after that? That's the question. Because you've, you've reached pretty high pinnacle in terms of what you can do in the sex industry. We'll get into that later about what's next, but um, that was more of a joke, like how much further can you go? Um, <laughs> so, so let me ask you, working in a, uh, was it an adult bookshop? Was it a theater? Was it something like that, that you started in? Um, it was like a lingerie okay. toy boutique. And then eventually nice. I worked at a hospital store um, I've worked at actually the original Hustler Hollywood store okay. uh, on Sunset Boulevard. Okay. So I did that. And then from working at Hustler, um, you know, we did signings with different porn stars. So I kind of started to meet people and was like, huh. so around the same time I was working at Hustler, I started to do porn as well. And then eventually I got to a place where the porn started getting pretty successful and I started doing more with that. And so, you know, my boss at the hustler store was like, okay, get out of here. Like, go do that full time. Like, go make your money, go make your career, like go live your life, get out of here. So I did. And so was the, like the hustler store working in strip clubs, any, anywhere that you had worked in the adult industry, 
was that a means to an end? Like, did you have an aspiration? Were you working to become a veterinarian or just were you kind of feeling things out? Um, and then this kind of just called to you? Pretty much. I mean, hmm. yeah, I was working in like, you know, restaurants and retail and just kind of like job hopping and didn't really like, wasn't really thinking as far in terms of like a long-term career. You know, it's just like, I'm just working jobs, you know, for sure. 20 something year old. And, um, you know, I'm no stranger to the sex industry and I have a pretty fun sex life. So, you know, it kind of brought me to this and, um, yeah, and no, so really did, did you have a boyfriend at the time when you went for your first scene or when you got involved in the industry? I did. So um, my girlfriend who actually like introduced me to the industry was seeing a guy at a time. And so I also started seeing him because we do like okay. open relationships, non-monogamy, stuff like that. Um, and he was like a like indie producer. So okay. I started working him making my own content just kind of like building my own name building my own brand and I worked independently for about like a year and a half um just doing my own stuff own production with him and a small team and you know um all so, of my like performers that's that's what I hear I like I know that um I we spoke to somebody who said that they had a performer who they were involved with who brought them into the industry We've had people who've had best friends who brought them into the industry. Um, so the, the solo content that um, were you like uh, initially like uh, trying to be like, uh, what's it called? You know, who, uh, who was it who was, uh, we made the joke about being a pop star as well. Um, like, do you see like um, porn as like a launching off career? to oh. other means oh know? okay we spoke with a uh, rebel lynn rebel lynn's another performer and um <clears throat> so she told us she saw it not as her only thing but um she's looking more towards the direct route to more mainstream so like an abella danger or like a you know uh who was it back in the day belladonna jesus i'm old yeah. um where you had someone and you go okay i can see either this person in a six guy gangbang scene or <laughs> i can see him on a barstool podcast and that's oh sasha gray sasha gray was another sasha great example of a, of a crossover star so uh when you were in this and actually we can apply this towards now um did you always want it to just be porn or would you someday take that next step to more mainstream things? I think you're mainstream. And by the way, I just need to clarify this with you as I did with your publicist and everything else. We are totally pro porn. have no problem with it. I met Shane in high school. And one of the first five things we said to each other was we started naming <laughs> off porn stars that we like. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 A hundred percent. Um, so still friends to this day, would, would that appeal to you in the future, moving from more porn into something like a mainstream role, or are you very happy in what you're doing nowadays? Like the type of thing, obviously you want to grow bigger. You want to more followers. You want to make more money on your scenes. Totally understand that. But does that offer you any appeal moving into mainstream as well? Yeah, it does. Um, I mean, I'm kind of open to everything just because I am so like new and fresh on the scene that I'm like, okay, I've got quite a few years ahead of me of focusing on like the performance, the performing, you know, the building that name up. Um, but then eventually from there, I want to start moving my way into the production side of the adult industry okay. and start producing. Uh, and then maybe once I kind of get that under control and I'm like, okay, you know, I've stayed, you know, I've built my name as a staple as a performer. Here I am as a production company. Um, then I could see myself maybe dabbling in like mainstream stuff too. Okay. You know, All right. Anywhere and everywhere. Definitely. Let, let me ask a question. So you want to move into the production side. Is that directing as well or just producing? Like, do you want to be behind the camera itself or do you want to organize the scene? Both. Okay. Okay. As much, Fair. Yeah, as much control as I can over it at first. Sure. sure. So let me ask you, as far as production goes, um, have you in the scenes you've done developed your own style or your own sense of what you want a set to be and have you seen good ones that you've taken inspiration from and you have seen have you seen bad ones where you go oh fuck i don't oh, want anything to do that. with that on the set <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, I mean, pretty much every set that I go to, I'm like studying, you know, like, sure. what are they doing? What are they using? How are they communicating with each other? You know, the lighting, the camera, stuff like that. Um, and I'm also, you know, taking notes on what are they doing in terms of like paperwork and consent talks and, you know, like before scene talks and after scene talks. Cause you know, sometimes you'll show up on a shoot and they're just like, all right, have at it. And you're just like, oh, <laughs> thrown into it. But, you know, other times they'll make you sit down with your co-performer and be like, okay, so like, we're going to go through our checklist. Are you okay with this? Are you okay with this? Do you want this? And I really like that. Cause I feel like going into it, like, you know what's going to happen, you know what you've discussed, you know how to not completely like fuck up the vibe or, you know. Yeah, I feel like that's better for everybody involved, you know? Exactly. And, you know, a lot of people do it on camera too. Like they'll record this checklist, like consent talk, that way you can fall back on it later and refer to it. And so it's just, you know, I'm like picking up accountability measures like that. Um... You know, and there's, there's certain sets that I've been on that I'm like, yeah, no, my set's not going to be like this. Like, this is bullshit. <laughs> my set will be much cooler than this. So, so not to, obviously, I mean, you're welcome to, but I'm not going to ask you to name the bad sets. But what is one thing, aside from what you just said, where it's just quick go at it, what's something where you go, nah, not on my set. I'm not going to do that. Whether it's a lack of breaks or... No pawns uh, at the catering table. <laughs> uh, just a... <laughs> Just a, just a total confusion of like um, maybe the, the producer has no idea which scenes and what order and what positions you're going to go with first. What is something that you get on a set and this happens and you go, fuck, how did I get set up on this one? Um, oh, so you mean like what do I absolutely like not want to happen? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your, what's your uh, when a female performer leaves your set someday, what is the one thing where you don't want her to go, fuck, Avery made me do blah, 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 blah. Or Avery didn't have this established blah, 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 blah beforehand. Right. Um, I mean, I would never want a performer to like leave my set feeling um, unsafe or like their boundaries were pushed. I want them to, because basically when, when I start production, I want to shoot, you know, my friends and people that I like and people that I want to give opportunities to and the porn that I want to make and watch and that, you know, I think would be interesting. Um, so I want to make sure everyone involved is having a good time. So I never want anyone to leave feeling like, you know, oh, that wasn't fun. That's not something I was interested in shooting. That's not the light I want to be shown in. I just want to make sure everyone feels like seen and appreciated as a performer and as a person. See, that's what I try to explain to Matt when I want to film him in porn. Like, he always <laughs> thinks I'm being a freak. And it's like, dude, no, I want to give you this chance to, like, show your good side, you know? You're on this show, like, saying all these stupid jokes all the time. Like, let us see what you're good at. That's because you keep trying to get me into a tub full of SpaghettiOs with three guys <laughs> pissing on me. That's the issue, Shane. It's well, it's got to stand out. <laughs> Where can I buy this video? Uh, Manyvids.com slash worst friend cast. No. Um... <laughs> Piggybacking off of that real quick, and then Shane, I will let you dive back into any any other questions you have. But um, piggyback away. As far as production goes, what I really am feeling encouraged about and feeling good about, and my porn viewing goes back to like I don't know, ninety seven, ninety six. I was probably like eleven <sighs> years old when I started looking at porn. Um, but uh, what I'm really encouraged by is all the women who are getting into the production side and the directing side. And that started probably before your time, but it seems like it's really picking up even more now. And I think that's awesome. I, I don't know that there's any question here. I just want to say, I think it's really awesome that you girls are the ones who are uh, lifting the weight of these scenes essentially. And now you're finally in an area of control where you can dictate exactly what happens because we talked to Gage who again, was a porn star way before your time, but she was a superstar. And she told us how she had to go in like a firecracker. Sometimes she goes, people will fuck with you on these sets. You have to go in and go, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing whatever. Um, so my question to you is uh, something I just forgot. <laughs> it, was, it, it was, it was a, it was a praiseful comment more than a question no there was a question in there and i lost it halfway through the praiseful comment there was oh. one yeah yeah Something uh, about women taking over women more women stepping up to produce where are you going with that 
Um, I think it's. I, awesome. I will say this though. I think that it will lead to many more pegging scenes. Um, because <laughs> I, I know with me and my wife, like when we like agree to do anal, like I, you know, it's like a compromise. It's like, all right, well, like we bought a, you know, like a special, like I think it's like thirteen inches. It's like clear blue dildo. Like I gotta get fucked in the ass if she's going to. It's fair, you know. <laughs> True. I'm a full believer in that. I like that philosophy. Shane, we're getting we're getting a bit of a clipping thing, um, so just watch your active listening on that. But uh, mm. all right, you actually led us really into a nice uh, path, Shane. Um, of course. I looked at your uh, Twitter bio, Avery, and uh, I believe what is it? Filthy backdoor whore, something like that. I don't want to misquote yeah, you on that. We got it. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Well, I've studied you. It's, it's research. You understand. Um, so uh, anal, I guess, did you grow up Catholic? Is that what it was? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. My first girlfriend too. Yep. Um, <laughs> so you kept your virginity real long, I bet. <laughs> Super. No, um, I, mean, I think it was a normal time. I think I Lost it at what, like 16, 17? It was like yeah. two weeks before my 17th birthday. Okay. All right. That's All fair. Right. And uh and uh was was it uh was that your normal virginity or the more fun one that we're yeah. talking about? Yeah, I didn't wanna I didn't wanna just come out and say it. I'm glad you coded it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm trying anal. Anal. We're talking about anal. No, oh, I didn't lose my anal virginity until I was like twenty two. Okay. oddity for a catholic girl yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah when i lost my virginity the first time around um it was really bad because he was really boring at sex and so i was like oh man like this isn't what it's hyped up to be and so i like got up and got dressed and went to church <laughs> now can, can i ask you and tell me if this is too personal you don't have to None dive into it from. were you uh were you one of those girls who were you in a committed relationship with that person or was it one of those things where I hear porn performers say this all the time and it blows my fucking mind. I hear women say this all the time. Like I just wanted to get it over with. It's like, ah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He, was some, he was some random. He was like some guy that I had a crush on and I was like, okay, I guess like, why not? Okay. Oh, that's kind of satisfying for me to hear as a, as a, as a man, like from a girl you're in a relationship with where she's like, Oh yeah, you know, like it was a bad fuck and it was just some dude who I really like from school. And yeah. it's like, oh, okay, you know, like the hot, like, uh, you know, uh, what, what, who's the guy from movies? Uh, Justin Bieber, is he in movies? No, I don't think no. so. 90 year old well, man, uh, Channing well, Tatum. That guy that was boring. Zac Efron. Yeah, yeah, Zac Efron was boring, but I no. like Zac Efron. I don't want to disparage his name. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, okay. So let me ask you your first time on set. Um, what was the scene? What did it entail? And if you remember, who was it with? Um, do you mean like my first time on set ever, like my own set? Or do you mean my first time for like a pro performing? Scene? Let's do, let's do both. Let's do. So sure. your first time for, uh, doing your own scene, was it just a, a basic solo scene? Was it a boy girl scene? So it was a boy girl anal scene and I had somebody like video it and produce it for me. Um, that one was fun. It was like a bondagey BDSM. And, you know, I was like, this is the first video of myself ever that I'm going to put out. So let me come out like, you know, swinging, swinging, let's make it an anal scene with a big dick and just like go for it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Do you, uh, Again, I have more of a, a early 2000s, late 90s mindset behind this, but do you have any regrets doing an anal scene so early on? Um, whereas not so much like uh, you couldn't handle it, obviously. That's not what I mean. I mean more like building up a career to then that becomes another plateau that you can hit later on. You can go, oh my God, now that she's a superstar, she got 50,000 followers everywhere. Here's Avery's first anal scene. Could have, but like that's the thing when I first started I wasn't sure if I was ever going to like hit the mainstream circuit sure. um and you know I had to work long and hard to get there 
So I didn't really like want to plan this whole, like, let me try to like, you know, build this for a year, two years, and then start shooting for companies and then build up more and then be like, oh, my first anal. Cause like, they don't really pay an obscene amount for a first anal scene anymore. Okay. Um, and I mean, anal sex is my preference for the type of sex I like to have. So, you know, I probably have- oh, damn. <laughs> Yeah, and I probably have like over 120 like self-produced anal scenes right, like before I started shooting for mainstream. So I was just like, no, nah, I'm just going to do it. Like, this is me. This is my thing. <laughs> wow, I commend you. <laughs> Shane, do you have any questions or you want me to just keep um, running? No, I just like, I really like- uh, the, You're in the, shock the, right now. I understand. They, I respect that. They shock me to silence in, in such a way. Like, it gives me hope for humanity in the future <laughs> like when i hear stuff like that you know i'm just like god damn this world is not so fucking fucked up it's not you know i get a lot of fan mail from people telling me like oh my god like because of you i've like started to practice anal now or like i really love anal and i'm like yay like i'm helping people do butt stuff like safely and enjoyably so it's cool I can't, cool. Avery, Avery gets a lot of fan mail. I'm practicing anal, blah, blah, blah. By the way, here's a picture of my dick. If you could just mail it back with like a letter grade, or I don't know if you do a one to 10 scale, but just, just here's a self-addressed stamped envelope. If you could just send this back in the mail to me, that would be great. Hey, they just send it on OnlyFans. I do dick grades on OnlyFans. Can I ask you, uh, from the female perspective, uh, because I don't understand it from the male perspective, what, what do you think uh, guys want with that? I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh avery if you could just stop for a second shane will explain it to us shane what do you want from that oh you just like when people are like oh it's a really good cock you know <laughs> yeah, that was just nice it's weird i find that um it's always the men who care most about the dicks in porn mm -hmm. always i don't know if it's like guys want to like see themselves in the video so they want to see a cock that looks like theirs or like some guys want to see cocks that are bigger and nicer than theirs and they like want to tap into that shame so guys are always concerned about the dicks more than i am i like my size or smaller when i watch yeah. i don't want to be emasculated but i do like i don't want to see some fucking micro penis shit you know like i don't have time for that you know like that's like that's some niche type stuff I like I can watch a guy with a short hog get fucked, but it can't be some freak show dick, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you the same question I asked Suzanne Ferrari, um, which we haven't asked any other performers yet, but I'm going to give you three characteristics of a guy. What I'd like you to do is you can only pick two and that excuse me, that third characteristic is going to suck. It's going to be really bad. OK. Just picture whatever your ideal version of that is. It is the polar opposite. So you have to build your perfect guy. You only get two out of the three. Perfect size dick, whatever that is to you, whether that's six, seven, 10, 12, whatever. Perfect size dick, perfect body, eight pack, chiseled, good shape, good looking guy. And the Please last one asshole. is. Yeah. <laughs> The last one is the uh, ability to last as long as you want. Okay. You Those are specifically. Your th he comes only when you come. No. Well, yes. If that's what or you want. Or when you want. tell him to. Yeah. yeah when you yeah. tell him to. Those are your three traits. I need you to pick two of those to build your perfect guy. And the last one's going to be bad. So say it's you want a guy with a perfect dick and he. A perfect body. And he has a perfect body. And as soon as you like kiss him on the neck, you like. Mm! And he just oh comes God! Up, right, I um, so in regards to perfect dick, if it's not a perfect dick, can it be too big? It can or does be. It have to be too small. No, no, no. It can be whatever you want it to be in, in terms of perfect. No, but again, she's, she's uh, saying oh. she's saying like if the bad attribute is the dick size oh, attribute, no, it's gonna be small. Can, oh no, 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 no. It's gonna be small. Too big? No, Why no, no. Be too big? Because that's you're trying to play mind games the, on me now. Because then you could just tell the guy to go halfway in. No, the no, only no. way I've you can play that. Porn. The only way you can play that caveat where it's like, oh, it's too big, is if it's a razor blade cock. What is that? What does that mean? It's just a cock made out of razor blade. No, no, that's <laughs> just weird. <laughs> 
Well, I'm just, I'm trying to get around it because I'm like, if it's too big, that is bothersome, but I could make it work still, even though there is such a thing as way too big. Look, yeah. Avery, we've all seen Lex steal videos. We understand what you do oh, in the case Lex. of too big. You just go in a quarter of the way and you go, <laughs> you just, you just isn't, isn't that really bigger than Matt? Bottom, yeah. Just yeah. shove the head in a little bit. Yeah. Well, the, you know what? If it's in terms of sex, then I think I could do with him not having a perfect body. Okay. If he oh, doesn't good. have a perfect body, because what does that mean? Does that mean he's got he's got either like a, a homeless, raggedy, like <laughs> filthy, hairy, fat, disgusting, alcoholic body, or he or weighs he's... four bills and he smells like pepperoni? Yeah, that's fair. I guess <laughs> I'm used to making guys shower before we fuck. Okay, all right, all right. fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Like There's it. always a workaround. There's always a workaround. <laughs> Um, I like she's willing to compromise too. She's practical. Sure. Well, and she's smart too. She tried to work her way around it. That's brilliant. Yeah. 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 She's always fucking looking for that deal. <laughs> Shane, what do you got? Uh, well, I, I don't know how far in we are, but I, I always like to ask my, my favorite question to ask is always about like uh, why you are in the industry and why you stay in this, in the industry uh, and, 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 and also work in how you feel about like, um, just sex in general. So like, um, some people are proud of their sex and their sexuality and they're, they're proud to put it on display and they want to actively show it to people, you know, like exhibitionism or something like that. Um, some people, um, look at it as like a, a way to make money and it's like, they don't really mind having sex. They don't really mind being nude. Um, and, and I'm always fascinated by that dichotomy of like, some people are just drawn to it because it's like, man, it's glamorous. It's exciting. It's uh, performative. It's I'm a star. And some people are like, well, you know, it pays really well. And, you know, I get, you know, I do a shoot a week and, you know, then I'm eating for a month, you know, like, it's just like, it's simple math. Um, it's just like, uh, I always wonder why, uh, I, I guess not why, but um, well, it's just fascinating to, to ask what the explanation is for you specifically, and also to, uh, to try and figure out why that is, I guess, if you have any insight into that. So which is it? Do you, do you really care about uh, not making money, but uh, just earning a living and doing a, a steady, healthy, vibrant career? Or do you just love fucking? <laughs> um, I will say... When I first started, it was definitely because I'm an exhibitionist and I just mm -hmm. love fucking. Um, I didn't really like think ahead too far. You know, I didn't quite equate it with like, oh, eventually like you're gonna get fans and people are gonna like know who you are and then you're gonna become like a celebrity and then like you're a porn star. I didn't really think that far ahead. I was just thinking, I really like to fuck and I have fun fucking. And so why not put that on video and like make some extra cash with it because it was fun. Um, and then so I was just gonna say, as I got further along and started like making good money and was like, oh wow, like this has changed my life. Like I can live a much better life for myself now with this money. Like, so now they're both kind of a driving force where I'm like, this is my career and where I make good money, but also like, I just really love to fuck and have fun. <laughs> That's the best answer I've heard. Um, and, and I got to ask too, like um, some background follow-up on that. Like before you released any scenes or content or, or anything like that, had you ever um, experimented or dabbled in stuff like that? Like, had, did you ever fuck at a party in front of, in, in front of a group or, or like, had you been like a spectacle in sex before? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, I'm like, oh God, I don't know who's gonna see this. Um, yeah, so before before porn, I was a stripper. So I was used to that type of exhibitionism. Sure. And then before stripping, um, I used to do, I was really, really big into the BDSM scene sure. uh, here in Los Angeles. So I did a lot of like, live sex shows and sex performances mm. and stuff at different dungeons and like conventions and stuff so 
I kind of, I feel like I started the more extreme route and then kind of worked my way around because it was like I got a job at a sex shop and then like a month later I was like performing at BDSM dungeons and like doing that and then after a while I was like oh let me like webcam and like hit the strip club and like all that but I'm pretty used to it I'm pretty used to performing at like lifestyle parties and in front of large crowds (laughs) Can I uh, can I ask you about uh, BDSM and then <clears throat> I want to get into some of the things you like and don't like and and then I have a video to play for you. Um, so let me ask you this because my wife likes to be tied up occasionally. Other girls I've talked to enjoy stuff like that, different bondage things, this and that. Not my thing, but I'm not opposed to it personally. What do you personally get out of that? And do you switch in terms of will you be the person dominating some? Is it, first off, is it a dom sub type thing? Second, will you take on the other role or are you strictly one way with that? Um, so I do like the power exchange aspect of it um, for like a better part of my like first starting out, I was submissive, um, but the older I've gotten, I've kind of, veered more towards like switching so i do like to kind of switch between being the more dominant force and the submissive oh, that's force. awesome yeah and to me it's just a little bit more fun when you can have that back and forth play with your partner so that's why i tend to go for people who are the same way who can kind of be dominant with me but then who can also like you know sub to, submit it's balanced to yeah so i like that a lot okay. <laughs> and um i don't know i like I guess the best way for me to describe it is I like to bottom. I like things to be done to me, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm submitting because I can top from the bottom. I can tell somebody, you know, tie me up like that or do that like that or fuck Uh. me like that. So I like to play off of that. Like you're doing something to me technically where you have control, but I'm still telling you and controlling you on how to do it to me. So stuff like that is fun for me. Okay. That's interesting. Insightful. So many women, it seems like, are into bondage, and I've just, I've never understood which of the things it was, whether it was a power dynamic, whether they get something out of being tied up just in general, maybe it's not even the power dynamic, and I find it interesting. I I make no judgments either way. Again, not necessarily my thing, but not not something I'm like, absolutely not, no, just (laughs) doing missionary and that's it, and then we're going to pray to God for the night, okay? (laughs) Um. So it's your let me magic ask, underpants. Yeah. yeah uh, following up on that, what are, give me something that you would, again, you've already established it's not just the money, but the money matters too. What is a type of scene that you think you would, and I hope no producers are listening to this, but would take a discount to shoot because you would just be so excited where the offer comes in and it's not quite as high as you normally get, but you're like, shit, I really want to do that. Try and negotiate with them. But if they won't come off that number, yeah, I'll still shoot that scene. Leo DiCaprio. <laughs> that's, that's a person. I was looking oh. for more genre. genre. Well, he's going to fuck me. I mean, that's really all that matters. <laughs> um... I'm trying to think. Uh, see, that one's hard because technically I would do like a kink or BDSM shoot um, at a discount just because I'm like, oh, that's so fun. And I feel like I don't get them that often. But at the same time, that's hard because um, doing scenes where you can get marked up sure. that you can't really work. So those scenes I want to do at a discount, but I'm also like, oh, I feel like those are the scenes where I need to charge more because if I can't work after it, right. you, know, you yeah. have to pay for that time off too. Um, but other than that, like, I don't know. I've, you know, I've accepted less, not too much less than my it's, work. I'm sorry. The, the, the money aspect was kind of just my way of like saying that, like, what is something where you're like uh, all well, of these... Uh, not not for free, not necessarily, um, but just... Yeah, what do we get right now for free? <laughs> no, actually, no. Uh, well, actually, I haven't signed up yet. I got to, though. I really uh, do need to sign up for that OnlyFans. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely you do. And make sure you check the show notes if you're listening to this and you really enjoy Avery to jump on everything. Follow everything she does. It's it's phenomenal. But what is something where you're telling your agent or whoever it is, like, I'm taking every one of these scenes. I, I said the money thing, but it was more just like, you know. 
Hey, Thank you're interested in this. Anal, yeah, everything. I want as yeah, right. many anal scenes as I can possibly do. And um, I, so my preference for scenes, I really, really like group scenes. I like if I can get DP'd. I like if there's three guys or more. I like gangbangs. Um, and so that's stuff that it's like, you know, you kind of have to hope they book you for those because it's such a big production that they, you know, they're very particular about who they book. And I'm kind of newer. So I'm like, hey guys, you know, I have at least like 10 of my own self-produced gangbangs up. Like I've organized my own gangbangs and make it happen. Like book me for those. Like I always want to do like group scenes like that. Like, I'm Jesus, that's a lot of work. <laughs> I have trouble getting people to my house for a barbecue. I imagine trying to get 10 guys to my house to fuck me. Hey, Shane, I don't want to go to your house for a barbecue either. But if she was inviting people over for a gangbang, I'd Uber my ass over there as quickly as I could. Okay. Yeah, that is the big difference. That's the difference between your barbecue and her parties. All right. Dude, I have poor <laughs> barbecues. Come on. They're, they're BYOB, though. I'm sober now. So, <laughs> so the reverse side of that is there something where someone goes, 10 grand, do this scene. And Avery's like, nah. Not no, doing that kind of shit. Not, not doing that. Jay, make sure, just watch the clipping. Is, is all I'll say again. Um, it. Sorry. Anything there? Uh, where you're just like, nah, not interested in that. Uh, race play. I won't do any type of race play for any amount of money. I, I say any type of race play. Um, if it were a scene in which, uh, you know, a white man wanted me to dominate him as a black female, I would do that. Um, although I wouldn't quite, you know, focus on his whiteness, but I would do that. But anything that degrades me as a black woman race play type, I would never. Totally. Okay, totally. so that's fair. Degrading is really like got to be the line, right? So like if uh, a white guy and an Asian woman want to pretend like if they're married and like uh, want to pretend like she's like the chick from Full Metal Jacket, you know, the the Asian prostitute walking through, you know, uh, uh, Saigon, you know, $10 sucky sucky. If it's all consensual, if it's all fun, even if it's a little, you know, a little iffy on the stereotypes, is that okay too? It depends. Like, okay, so it feels like a cosplay situation where we're cosplaying mm -hmm. at some type of whatever, like work of art that's already there, like maybe. But, um, you know, like I did one video one time where it's me and an Asian girl. And, you know, I'm talking about sharing my boyfriend with her. And I was like, yeah, my boyfriend has a big black cock. And like, even just that, when I like look on the replay of that, I'm like, I'm never gonna say that again. Like, I don't like that. I don't like doing the whole like, oh, let me like serve my big black dick, you know, to you. Like, I was just like, eh. you know, and I'm okay with like, you know, tags being used like ebony or whatever, but just straight like anything having to do like with my race being the focal point of the sure. thing i'm like not really interested okay yeah i think that's totally cool i think that's um understandable what i want to um i'll reference uh, another interview we did during this series with was with uh sarah J. I i don't know do you know sarah J at all i know of her yeah yeah she uh her production company wide side productions i believe um she specifically is going out of her way to not introduce any kind of race or gender or anything like that into her descriptions of of performers and and this and that because exactly like you said like this is a guy it doesn't matter that he's a black guy doesn't matter that he's whatever um sorry i just, just matters that his cock generic. is used yeah 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 it doesn't matter how big of a uh a dick it is how know, black it, it is it, how black it matters how it big is. it matters is how big yeah. it is apologies yeah. yes um so i think that's that's really great uh i personally don't get off on race play myself so you know whatever but i want to show a video real quick um this is an interview you did with mr nuts maybe is that his name probably yeah yeah um it's just real quick i'm not going to show the entire scene um but i want to reference one specific thing you you pointed out and i think shane's gonna get a kick out of this i uh, i saw this porno one time where they uh gaped a girl's ass wide open with a speculum and then they put fruit loops in it and milk and the two other talents were like eating the cereal out of her ass and for me that was everything i remember the first time i saw it i was like 
Ugh. And then by like the third or fourth time in a row I watched it, I was like, The third or fourth time ah, in a row. You know? <laughs> oh, I was fixated on it. I, I, I could see Fruit Loops. So uh, Shane has brought that scene up to me multiple times in my life. Um, I think even on a recent interview. That yeah, we scene talked about it with Gage. Up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so is that still something you'd like to put into your repertoire? Would you like that on your resume? at some point in life and are we limited to just cereal obviously we're gonna go cold not hot things so you know no, gazpacho yeah. soup would be about the limit as far as soups go i mean i really want the fruit loops a friend of mine volunteered that she'll eat ramen out of my butt so i think we're definitely Ooh. gonna try some ramen i'm all for the ramen yeah right I'm like that would be smooth noodles um <laughs> <laughs> oh man the worst though would be like what it, you know how you cook ramen where you just pour the boiling water on the hard noodles and then it just like absorbs the water you have to fill your ass with the boiling water and then just drop the hard noodles in and let them get moist i can't burn my asshole hey you you said you wanted the ramen treatment that's how they make it yeah <laughs> crack an egg in there sure yeah yeah get it real authentic all right <laughs> we're going on a tour here oh uh, yeah sorry about that guys i got no. a delivery so let me just grab no that. please grab it <laughs> i just moved this week so i'm getting like a lot of deliveries and shit i understand this fruit loops are coming in <laughs> this feels like one of those videos i'm trying to get my wife to make where you have the delivery guy come to the door and you're in like crotchless panties or something and then it's like, oh, well, let me bend over and get my pen to sign for it. He's like, no, miss, I've got a pen and your pussy's hanging out. It's like, no, no, hold on. You seen those videos? I'm trying to make those videos. Right. <laughs> those are good ones. A uh, 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 quick question for Shane. Shane, your scenario about Full Metal Jacket, uh, have you actually engaged in that with your wife? Uh, not in years. We still, um, I mean, I wouldn't say race is a focal point when we do role play stuff. It's usually like a, a submissive, it's like a power uh, hierarchy type thing. It's usually like a student and a teacher or a boss and a co or whatever. You know, you get the idea. But um, but we, we haven't really focused on race really in years. Sure. But uh, like inevitably, like if I'm the fucking, you know, head of the household and she's the babysitter, uh, of, of course it's going to slip out you know, sometime throughout the night, like that she's like a 17 year old. We can pretend <laughs> she's Christ. 33. We can play that way. Uh, you know, we'll pretend that she's like a, you know, a 17 year old, uh, Baby. Asian babysitter, you know, like, and she is Asian. She's not like, uh, she's not putting on yellow face or something awful like that. Uh, she really is Asian, but it, it's, it's just slipped in, you know, it's just kind of mentioned because, you uh, know, it was just such a specific example and fit your uh, makeup with your family so perfectly. Well, I was that like, oh, no, he's well, that done really this. did happen. <laughs> okay. it, just, it just hasn't happened that way in years. I mean, okay. it happened more than once. Okay. It's not, okay. not in years. You know, my, my wife was like, have you heard of this thing called wokeness? I think we should probably stop doing that full metal jacket scene. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this one's not good anymore. We can't do this <laughs> thing anymore. <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Filipino. That movie's in Vietnam. This is not going to play right. Can I ask you, Avery, a behind the scenes question? And this is going to be naive of me, incredibly naive, okay? Okay. You, I believe, shot a scene with Glory Hole Secrets, right? Yeah. One nice. of my favorite sites. I mean, just, was that, a, it, that's Aziani or a Aziani that owns those, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Glory Hole Secrets is Aziani, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just phenomenal grouping of sites that those folks have over there. Um, now, your scene specifically, I did not get to go through and scan it in my giant hard drive of terabytes and terabytes of pornography. But <laughs> um, was there? All right. All right. Again, this is going to sound naive and I'm going to sound like a child. Um, did you did you swallow multiple loads during that scene? Yes. OK, good. Wonderful. I'll check it out later tonight. Second part of that is. When you're shooting a scene like that, are you solid to just run through it end to end? Or are you taking breaks to drink water? Are you taking breaks to throw up? Are you doing anything like that? <laughs> or are you just good pounding down 10 loads like you're Barry Manilow in the 70s? 
Um, I mean, I'm good to go. For my Glory Hole secret shoot, uh, I was paired with another girl. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we ended up taking, I think, like one or two breaks. But for the most part, we were just good to go straight through. Okay. And it's right. always nice to have another girl help out because it's like, okay, we can like hop from here to here. And like, I can like hold the balls and like talk to her while she sucks. And we can like, you know, trade off. So sure. Just, just encouraging words like, hey, you're doing a really good job there. I'm holding these balls, but like you got this one. You just chug this one down, okay? Exactly. It's just a... shared. We shared all of the cups. So was... Oh, that's oh. really nice. That's really Caring. good. <laughs> Here, here's what I learned about Gloria Holtz. Um, it doesn't matter if you put a condom on your cock first before you stick it in the hole. They will pull it off of you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've never been to like any real glory holes off of the Oh, <laughs> they don't shoot those scenes in real glory holes? <laughs> it's a real glory hole. It's, a real glory it's hole. really a hole cut in the hole. We know that everyone <laughs> tested, so we don't like start with condoms. You know, there's no condoms for it. We're just, we just go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. I just want to clarify. So the the hole that you film at is not like in a bar called Sparks. No. no. Okay. Or or two cans or something like that. No, it's a special glory hole. Oh. <laughs> I like how she I, said that. She said that like you were a little special child. Like well, she's explaining to you. No, I thought that the glory holes you see at like gay clubs and porn shops and stuff. I thought that was how they filmed the movies. I mean, some might. I'm sure there have been many films at those, like at the bar, glory holes, at the bathhouse, glory holes, like at all those. I'm sure. Oh, okay. All right, so I don't have <laughs> glory hole is right? wherever you make it to be. Yeah, well, that should be sewn on a pillow somewhere. Right. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 please excuse my friend. He still thinks ET is real, so uh, we just need to clarify movie making to him behind the scenes. <laughs> oh, you know, like I didn't go to school for this shit. I did. I paid forty grand for it. Um, <laughs> now you know how fuck scenes work. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, let me ask you, is there anything that you haven't done yet coming up in your future? Any future scenes you're going to be shooting? Um, I'm look, I'm just really, I'm, I'm trying to get a roundabout way of asking if you are ever going to do something like a Bukaki scene or a, uh, I think it's another Aziani site is, a uh, is gangbang cream pie associated with them? Yeah. 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 Any yeah, of those I'm really the... into piss stuff. So if you could do some piss stuff too. <laughs> We're not requesting it. We're nicely Shout asking. Shout out to my OnlyFans. I do a lot of piss stuff. Yeah, I need to Shout go. Shout on the down low there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll make a, I'll tip you and make a request. <laughs> So is there anything coming up that you're like, oh, okay, uh, this is scheduled or I want to get one of these type of scenes scheduled, something you haven't done before? Um, I mean, there's just like, I guess like a few more sites that I want to like really start shooting for more regularly. And, um, you know, I shot for Tushy Raw, which was a big deal. So now I want to start like hitting more of their sites. I want to hit Tushy, um, you know, Vixen, Deeper, all of their sites. Mm -hmm. um, I want to shoot more for Mind Geek. So I want to do more stuff for like Brazzers and Reality Kings. Um, and then something that I'm trying to set up, hopefully early next year, I'm trying to go to Prague and shoot for Legal uh Portal and okay. kind of be like a little european tour um okay so yeah and in january i'm going to new york for the first time to shoot with some new york companies so i'm kind of traveling and looking forward to you know going different places okay all right have you let me ask you have you ever shot with somebody and then i think i have one more question shane if you have anything follow it up after this and then let me close on one but have you ever shot in any kind of situation early on in your career where you not during the scene didn't feel safe but maybe just the setup of it where you were like this is at a motel six and my agent or whoever it is has never worked with these people before have you ever been in any situation where you were like iffy i'm iffy on this right now um trying to think mm, i haven't had too many like iffy situations just because like when i first started i did have like a boyfriend type 
role in my life so most people were like okay like there is a man in her life so no and then after that I got an agent so you know after that um no I haven't really been like thankfully I haven't had too many like sketchy instances or anything like that cool Uh, it's always such a relief to hear because it's like you know porn's just gonna keep on existing you know it's so much you know the the creep guys that set up those type of things what you don't realize is you're taking a hot girl who could have a lot of longevity in the industry and you're probably like ruining not ruining her as in she's ruined but ruining her experience so much that she's out after that and you've ruined it for everyone yeah it happens it happens a lot um you know and i'm sure like i'm sure i've had people attempted on me but yeah I'm very I'm very adamant about like studying people before I meet up with them and I ask a lot of questions and like I like to get a vibe so I'll kind of like trail off on making plans to shoot with people for a few months just to have those few months of like catching their vibe see what they're going to be like and if they raise any red flags then I'm like oh there's a reason why I didn't want to shoot with you immediately but um you know yeah I tried to avoid the sketch as much as possible because I do hear the horror stories. It happens. Sure. sure. Shane, do you have anything else for Avery today? I do. Yes. I have one short, quick last question. Um, and and I will find out later, but I'm just gonna ask you now while I got you here in person. Um, so on your OnlyFans, I know you said you do cock ratings. Do you do uh vag ratings too? Yeah, I would. No one's okay. ever asked for it yet, but yeah. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to body rating. If someone wants me to rate their tits, rate their asshole, like whatever. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to send you some gals. <laughs> <laughs> Let, oh, you know what? I have one more question, but piggybacking on that. Have you ever given a rating that was the wrong way? Meaning some guy wants you to say one, like, I want you to just shit all, not literally, but shit all over my dick and be like, oh my God, that sucks so bad. And you're like, oh, that's an eight. And I'm just sitting at home like, fuck did I tip for? I have a great dick. I hate this. <laughs> or the other way, have you ever had a guy who thought he had a good piece and he's like, hey, Avery, here's your money. Check out my peg. And you were like, oh, that's a three. And he, you know, hung himself or something. And do some guys ask for absolute sincerity and honesty? I think most people are looking for honesty. Like, I think they're looking for my genuine opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, I've learned to give my genuine opinion without, you know, like destroying somebody's hopes and dreams. Um, Signed up. You've got a fucking (laughs) lifelong member right now. You know, like usually when I rate dicks, I'll, um, you know, I'll, I'll play the guessing game. I'll try to guesstimate how big it is. So instead of like giving them a rating on like, oh, you know, that's a three because like your dick's so small. I'll usually be like, oh, I'm going to guess that that looks about like a this to this inch. I like this about it. This is what I like about it. This is what I could do with it. This is what it would be perfect for. And so everyone usually gets between a seven and a ten. <laughs> I've never seen a dick that ugly before that I have to give it lower than a seven. Like most dicks are pretty. You know, uh, there's something pretty about everyone. Well, I like you, that you, most you, of the crust from your cock is on that <laughs> tissue on the table over there and not on your dickhead anymore. I do, I do lay into guys though whenever they take their pictures over a toilet because for some oh. reason a lot of guys have this idea that like standing over the toilet I guess is where they're used to like holding their dick so they think that's where to like take the picture. No, it's not a psychological thing it's logistics. I'm going to solve this for you right now Avery. Um, what this is is um, when you're squatting down and you have a boner like let's say you're taking a shit when you first wake up and you got a huge rock hard morning woodcock. Thanks for keeping Um, it sexy, by the way. Go ahead. Your dick looks huge when you look at it at that pit in between your legs, which is the toilet bowl. So you get your legs opened up and you're squatted down and you look down and there's no leg there. There's no mass. There's no you. There's no body there to make you think your dick is smaller in comparison to your thigh or something. So when you're squatted down like that, your dick looks bigger to you. And then when you go to take the picture, you're like, God damn it why can't i get my cock the way it is in the picture i'm telling you this from experience so but then the worst place <laughs> well what what you end up learning is oh i have to go just in a regular room and lock the door take all my qu- clothes off and squat down like i'm gonna sit on a jar 
and then take the pressure of my cock. There are tricks, there are tricks. All you gotta do is squeeze at the base really, really hard. Mm, it's gonna yeah. stop that blood flow and that's gonna make it look nice and swollen and you get it real, real up close to the base. You know, you tuck your balls down so you can get as much shaft as possible. You can get a nice dick pic without needing the toilet bowl in it. <laughs> she knows, man. She is a fucking pro. And I will tell you how I know that. We just had an episode where I explained to Matt how I wanted to have my balls surgically removed because they're always <laughs> in the way when I try to take pictures of my dick. And so I have to end up, you know, wrenching my ball sack down, like trying to tuck it up between my ass cheeks like I'm a drag queen. I, I say just get rid of the fucking things. <laughs> you can try tucking them into your butthole. I know one guy, he can shove his balls in his butthole so he gets them out the way for pictures. <laughs> Jeez, that's awesome. <laughs> um, last question I have for you here, and it, it may take more of a serious tone, but I'm interested in it because I saw you mention it in your other interview. Um, you do work with bi and trans perf uh, performers. Uh, I think that's uh, a wonderful thing if you choose to do that, and uh, I have no problem with it. Um, Personally, I'm into it. My question is, and I again, I won't make this political. I don't mean it to sound political, but do you believe it's every performer's right to work with who they choose to work with and i only i think back to things like the august ames situation where i believe she was somewhat online bullied because she didn't want to work with performers uh that had done uh bisexual scenes with other men or, or stuff like that and uh it's it's a real tragedy because to me it's always been a woman's right to choose whatever she wants to do, you know? And if somebody comes out and says, hey, I'd rather not work. Now, you don't have to be rude about it. You don't have to use slurs. You don't have to do anything like that. But I've always been bothered by that one so much because it's like, to me, porn is such an inclusive group. I mean, you guys are just the best at um, being woke while not being pushy or shitty about it and this and that and um, for so long for so long for so it's long. been that way yeah I, I mean there's no better bastion of free speech than porn i think that goes back to the larry flint days you know but um i do you i know you may not judging by the other interview and maybe i'm wrong on this maybe you might not want to work with a person who's less inclusive like that but do you do you believe it's everyone's right to then choose who they're willing to work with and not Absolutely. Um, you know, I think it's I, I fully believe in your body, your choice uh, for everybody. Um, so, you know, I because I know performers who are like, yeah, so that's the thing. We're very inclusive. But at the end of the day, you know, we are porn performers. We're not all necessarily like scientists. We don't know everything there is to know about, you know, everything. Um, so there are people who, you know, won't do crossover because they don't understand, you know, how that works. And there's that stigma. So it's like, okay, I get it. It's your body, your choice. There are people who are like, oh man, I want to, but you know, I can't because it might affect my career this way. And, you know, again, your body, your choice and do what's best for you and your career and your work. Um, you know, and then if you do work with crossover performers, again, your body, your choice. Like sure. as long as everyone is doing what they want to do, um, you know, and again, as long as everything just kind of stays respectful, um, you know, there was a whole scandal earlier this year where a man like didn't want to shoot with a trans performer after the shoot was set up and everyone showed up on set. And it was like, you know, people were like, yeah, but it's his body, his choice. And we we're like, yes, well, absolutely. It's his body, his choice. Also, you know, he said this many slurs and this wasn't quite handled well. And like, yeah. you know, it could have been handled differently to where it wouldn't have been as big a situation. Accountability. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's totally fair. Um, let me plug you again use of the word i apologize on that let me plug you i said let me go through your promotions here okay you can follow avery at uh avery jane x on instagram uh you can go to twitter and follow her at avery jane xo uh you can go to OnlyFans and sign up i believe you're running a special right now three dollars for 31 days which is Hell a fair yeah. deal you could jack that price up and and it would still be a fair deal um that's her only and how much that's... for that cock rating 
<laughs> real quick, and then I'll let you get back to it, man. I just got to know. For in the audience. I think cockwritings, I do like, um, what is it, like 20 bucks to type it out, 50 bucks if you want like a video response. Oh, yeah. Well, I got a 200 smackaroos, so <laughs> send you four different shots of this thing right over a toilet. <laughs> Come hop in and I'll send you some piss videos. <laughs> If you want to download individual videos of Avery, you can go to AveryJaneXXX.com. That's going to redirect you to the ManyVids site, which I actually love that site. I think that's a phenomenal site. And if you want to join her ultimate fan site, that's all of AveryJane.com. One last thing, Avery's going to be appearing at XBiz's fan show. It's called X3, and that's on January 7th and 8th at the Palladium in Hollywood. And she'll have her own booth there. You can stop by. You can talk to her. Don't do the dick rating in person um, unless you've got uh, 50 bucks and it's on your phone, maybe. I don't know. You'll have to check with her first. It'd be um, way more expensive in person. Oh, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, <laughs> so stop by your booth with a lot of money. See if you can take out a second mortgage on your home. Get your tickets at uh, x3.show and use the code AveryX3 at checkout so she knows that you are there to support her. Um, Avery, you've been wonderful today. You've been open. You've been honest. We really appreciate your time. Is there anything you want to say? You don't have to. I just give that option open. I just want to say thank you guys for having me. Wonderful. It was a pleasure. Good luck with your move. I hope all your packages get there. And you've been wonderful. Thanks so much, Avery. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah, I feel like that. Thanks for listening to Your Worst Friend. Going deeper. Okay.